Today we're out here at Southeast Bullock Middle School doing a little bit of a practice run of certification. The certification that we're doing is going to be under the NNDDA standards. Now, in the state of Georgia, there is no standard set in place, but a lot of departments, in fact, all the departments that I know of, all the handlers that I know of, actually certify under some type of standard, whether it's NNDDA or NAPWADA or USPCA or whatever certification standard they choose, a lot of departments and a lot of handlers feel that it's very, very important to do that even though there's no state standard in place and that is part of the foundation's mission is to make sure that these teams are being certified. Now, with that being said, there is a huge debate within the canine world if certification standards are even needing to be in place because it comes down really to training and maintaining proper training records. Whether you agree or disagree with whatever certification standards somebody may do, we as a foundation just try to support teams that are trying to get certified and are certifying under some standard. But me personally, I am more of a fan of making sure that there is proper training and there's proper training documentation going on. So as you come and come along with us and see some of this standards, uh, just keep in mind, this is just one standard set by the NNDDA. It's not the end all be all. I'm not saying it's better than anybody else's. It's just one. So just keep that in mind, let's go. Another disclaimer is that you may see something in here like we're using a hard sleeve or we're using some type of equipment or somewhere or the training aid is put somewhere that you necessarily may not agree with. Listen, it's just to show an overview of what we're doing and a little bit of NNDDA certification. Don't read too much into it. We do a lot of different trainings, a lot of different training scenarios. We don't necessarily show everything that we do because we can't really film in dark rooms with somebody sitting very still and then sending a dog in and trying to locate those per that person. That's not part of this standard. That's more of the training part of things that may be in somebody's standard. We all understand that. Just stick with us. Just a little disclaimer to make sure everybody understands we're all on the same page here. So now let's get going. A few requests to see Rio find drugs and explain what he's doing. So he will sniff pretty much to where the odor is going. Now this is heroin and it's pushing pretty good. So pretty obvious behavior change, not discreet as others. But it's right there in between the seat. Every dog is usually rewarded, but not the same reward. This is a Kong. It has no food, no trees or anything like that in it. Good boy. This guy right here, K9 Pike, was able to track a 13 year old who was missing. The track was three hours old and it was about a half a mile. He is all amped up. Oh yeah. Good boy, Pike. Live. So that was basically the detection side of NNDDA. If you want to look up like actual details of what all it entails, it's on their website. I'll put the website uh, in the description below for you guys to look at. But basically, hopefully you were able to see that the canine um, 
was working to the odor. Uh, you could see that his behavior changes and then he would come to a final response, usually by sitting. Dogs have different rewards. Dogs do different things. Like I said, it's not anything uh, specific to every single dog. Every dog is gonna work a little different than normal. So that wraps up the detection side. Let's check out the patrol part. Well, that kind of sums up the certification. We didn't do all of the certification. Of course, I didn't show everything that we were able to do and we weren't able to complete everything in the certification. Like I said, I'll drop a link down there. So if anybody's interested, they can look at the complete certification and the standards that the NNDDA has set. Um, but all the dogs did awesome. They should, they should have no problem certifying whenever we do certify. Like I said though, one thing that everybody can agree on is proper training and training equipment and documentation of that training with that being said uh, we'll be doing some more videos so look out for those and like and follow all that good stuff and we will see you next time